Hi people, Daniel from Devil Sons Guitars here. And today I'm going to talk to you about how to clean the fretboard on your guitar or on your bass. Great, so first things first, you don't have to take the neck off your guitar like I have here. The reason this is off is it's the first guitar I actually ever owned, first electric guitar I ever owned, and it's featuring in a few of my videos at the moment. I'm completely taking it apart, stripping it, repainting it, and customizing it in different ways. But while it's off, perfect time for me to clean the fretboard. Ideally you want to clean your fretboard every time you change your strings. What you'll see is the dirt and grime that gather up between the frets really need to be cleaned off and it's quite hard to do it with the strings on but if you do have a good daily care maintenance so every time you're playing your guitar you're wiping down your strings and your fretboard every time you're performing live Basically, even if it's just out and about and gathering dust, it needs to be cleaned. Um, if, you're, if you're doing that daily, then really the grime will take a lot longer to build up. I've got a whole other video on daily guitar maintenance. Now the fretboard on this guitar neck and on this bass neck are cleaned in the same way because they both have the same dark wood fretboard. Now it doesn't matter what dark wood fretboard you have, it might be rosewood like this or ebony, but the dark woods are cleaned in a different way to a light wood, say a maple. And that's because normally the maple fretboard is going to be varnished and shiny. Now, if you have a fretboard like this with no finish on, even if it is a maple or light wood one with no finish on, you can more or less follow the same processes. I'll talk about the differences as we go along. But if you've got a shiny finished one, so it's had some sort of varnish or lacquer put on it, you don't want to be cleaning it in the same way because any cracks that appear in that varnish, when you're cleaning, the cleaning substances you're using might slip into those cracks and affect it in a different way. Also, when you're cleaning, you don't want to have any abrasion on that shiny surface because it would dull it. So ideally, a shiny finished fretboard like a maple white light wood neck uh, fretboard wants to be cleaned just using a very lightly damp cloth so cloth that you can put some water on and wring it out and that will be fine to clean it with avoid using the cleaners we're using here I'm resting my neck on this padded surface but you might want to use a neck rest or something if it's on your guitar so that when you're cleaning you're not putting any pressure on the neck and causing it to bend in any way. Now to get rid of most of the gunk off of the fretboard we're actually going to just use some wire wool. Really what you want to use is the finest wire wool you can get, something like a 000 or four zeros grade to give it a good clean. Basically you don't want to be scratching the surface of the fretboard and you don't want to be scratching up the frets too much. I'm actually going to make a separate video about polishing frets which will come out very soon so make sure you like and subscribe to see that when it's out. The fretboard that I've got as I mentioned before is a dark wood one and it hasn't got any lacquer or finish on it. This is where if you have a finish you don't want to use the wire wall you just want to go straight in with something light like a, a microfiber cloth that's damp. The other things I have here are fretboard cleaner and prep. This is a Dunlop one. I've also got Dunlop Ultimate Lemon Oil, which I will put on for conditioning the fretboard. Dunlop also sell a conditioner. I'll leave links below to the different types of cleaner and conditioner you can get, and we'll talk about some alternatives later. So from here, you can definitely see the dirt that's on the frets. And what I'm gonna do is clean three different frets in three different ways, just to demonstrate what you can do depending on what you have handy. Now, first of all, with the wire wall, I'm gonna clean this up. So just doing it with the wire wall, what I'm trying to do is get in next to the frets and then go parallel with in the direction of the grain to keep it from showing any marks. I'll just wipe it down with a cloth. And we can see that's picked up the grain pretty, dirt pretty well. Um, I think with all of this, because the dirt's quite big, it's going to be more than just one attempt at this. It's going to be a few attempts to get everything off. The next thing I'm going to do is you use this lint-free cloth. You could use a microfiber rag, and I'm going to try using the Dunlop fingerboard cleaner. Now, um, with anything that you're going to be putting on your guitar, like a polish or a cleaner that's in a spray or a drop form, you don't want to spray it directly onto your guitar. You want to put it on the rag that you're using. And the reason you're doing this is you don't want it to pull up in any way, this so way you also get more control over it. And then I'm going to wipe that down. And this will pick up the dirt that's on there. It looks shinier, it looks cleaner than the wire wall was. But that's just because it's making it moist as well. So both of them have really cleaned it up just as well as each other. 
So you don't need to go out necessarily out of your way to buy a fretboard cleaner. But if you do, it works as well as using the wire wool, which again, you might have to go out of your way to get hold of. Um, with the fine wire wool, it is actually quite hard to buy just in a normal hardware store. I'll leave some links below. One thing you can look up is something like a furniture polishing shop that might sell it. Just for the third fret, I'm going to give you a demonstration of combining the two. So I'm going to spray a bit of the cleaner onto the wire wall and then clean that down there. Again, try to get the sides of the fret in and then going with the grain. And I'm just going to wipe it down for the camera. You see as it's drying off, it looks almost the same as the wire wall finish. I would say there's still some grime here that I need to get up. Remember, don't use the wire wall if your guitar has a shiny lacquered finish on the frets, on the fretboard, and that's likely to happen if you've got something like a light colored fretboard, like a maple. Also, if your fretboard is lacquered and shiny, you don't really want to be using any kind of liquid that might involve some sort of color going into any cracks that might be there, fine cracks you might not even notice on the lacquer. And as that liquid seeps in, it will cause those cracks to become more prominent. That's why you want to just use something like this or a microfiber cloth, get it very slightly damp, wring it out and then just wipe it down. But nothing can be daily maintenance to keep it clean. So for this video, I'm just gonna carry on using the Dunlop fretboard cleaner and this rag. So this rag has only been used today on the couple of frets you just saw, and you can see it's really picked up quite a lot of dirt. So let's compare this to what it's gonna look like once I've finished cleaning the whole fretboard and you'll see how dirty it really is. I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch through it all. And while I'm doing this, what would be really great is maybe you can leave in the comments below any tips you have for cleaning your fretboard. Things that you've picked up along the way or heard from roadies, etc. are always useful tips to pass on. So do check out the comments to see what anyone has left before. And maybe while you're there, it would be great if you could leave me a comment just saying where you're from, because I've got no idea where my viewers are based. It's always nice to try and put some sort of personality to the people that are watching these videos. So I'm going to start this process just using the Dunlop cleaner and prep and see how much I can get off. I've got a feeling that there's enough dirt built up on here that I will have to go back with the wire wall. So let's see what happens. So I can actually see there are bits where the dirt has really built up and I am going to have to go in, I think, with the wire wall on those. It's a bit more effective than just using a rag. So again, I'm going along the side of the frets and then trying to go along with the grain. And every time I squirt a new bit of the cleaner, I'm trying to just use a fresher bit of the rag. I find these lint-free cotton rags are quite good. You could sort of make them out of an old shirt. I bought a load of rag just on eBay a while ago. It's lasted me ages. What you can see as I go along is the frets seem to be looking shinier. I am actually going to do a whole video on how to polish your frets. It's not something you have to do every time you clean your fretboard. And really you only want to clean your fretboard every time you change strings. It probably doesn't need cleaning more regularly than that, especially if you're following a good daily maintenance care. Yeah, that's quite a lot of dirt that's come up. So even though I've now removed all the grime off of the neck and it is clean, it's not actually got much shine to it. It looks very dull. That's why you now would use some sort of conditioner on your neck. Here I've got the Dunlop lemon oil. Now, just to point out, when it says using lemon oil, it's not actually pure concentrated lemon oil. So you can't go cutting a lemon in half and squeezing the juices out. That'd be way too acidic and ruin your neck. But there are lots of different types of conditioner. I will leave links below for you to buy them via Amazon. So here I've got a clean rag. I always use a clean rag whenever I'm working on a new fretboard. I'm gonna do the same thing again where I spray onto the rag, not onto the guitar. Uh, only a couple of sprays. And then I'm gonna rub this along the fretboard. So. When you're cleaning the fretboard, that's something you really want to do when you see the grime building up and when you're taking the strings off. It's very hard to do with the strings on, as is this. So you probably want to do that every time you change your strings. But with the conditioning and this 
lemon oiling, you don't necessarily have to do it every time you clean up. You might clean up the strings and your fretboard might still have that nice shine to it really. If you're using the wire wall it's, it is going to get rid of the shine but if you're just using a cleaner or you've got your maple neck and you're just wiping it down you're not going to get a dull look to it. One thing to point out again if you've got one of those necks that's already shiny because of the varnish on it you do not want to be putting lemon oil on it. If it gets into any invisible to the eye cracks on your guitar it's really going to start to ruin that finish and show up on it. So I'm just rubbing this in and unlike the fretboard cleaner it's not going to dry out it's going to stay shiny. So just while we're talking about the lemon oil I'm actually going to use it on the end of the base neck here on the fretboard. This fretboard wasn't actually as dirty as the strap the guitar one was but it's still got some dirt on it and you can use the lemon oil to clean the dirt off as well. So as well as conditioning it's good at removing some grime. So here it is squirted on my cloth and I'll just rub it in and you'll see that it does sort of the its normal purpose of conditioning the neck but also it's going to pick up some dirt. Let's just finish this cleaning and I'll have a look at it. So you could completely ignore using the string cleaner. Maybe just use the lemon oil and maybe the lemon oil in conjunction with the wire wall depending on just how much dirt and grime you've got on your guitar. But it doesn't take up much time and it's not really that expensive to buy some cleaner in. You can see the dirt is picking up. I mean this really wasn't anywhere near as dirty as the guitar so it's hard to compare. Great, thanks so much for watching this video. Like I said at the beginning this neck is from the first electric guitar I owned. I'm in the process of doing a real customization job on it and you'll see it appearing in a number of videos coming up. And this bass neck is a second hand neck that I'm putting on a parts caster bass that I made a long time ago. In fact it was one of the first attempts I made at making a shatter caster bass. The bass series I make where the surface of the guitar includes broken and shattered mirror. And what I'm doing on that is revisiting it touching it up, repainting the area around the mirror and putting a new neck and new hardware on. That's also going to appear in some videos. I'm making it so it matches up colour wise and finish with that Squire Strat I'm customising. So I'll have a pair, a bass and a guitar that go hand in hand so that I can use them for some videos and demos that I'll be making as I come up. Also they're the guitars I'm going to be using for myself all the time so they've got to be done really well with a really good finish. Great, so until next time, happy strumming.